if I set this up, it, it's a sort of a prophetic message. This is the the right now warfare against the church. This is the right now warfare. We know the Bible talks about a great falling away. But before this, I believe there must be a stumble. You don't just fall. Did you know you know you don't just fall down? There has to be a stumbling block or something to trip over, something to cause the fall. This is the stumble before before you actually fall. This is what Satan is doing. Amen. You can feel it, you can see it, you can sense it that everything that was once solid is sandy. The uh, go to Yahya Psalms, Psalms chapter eleven, verse three. You there? Now you must understand, in order to make anything fall, you must attack the foundation. If you wanted to destroy this building, you would be silly to start with the roof. Because you could tear the whole roof off and the structure would still stand here. Because the structure is not supported by the roof. The roof is supported by the structure. But if you wanted to knock the building down, you, you attack the foundation, the ground part, the part, that's, the part that's sitting on the ground. That's what's holding everything else up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the warfare is to erode the foundations by attacking the, the basic, uh, basic understandings of God, basic teachings and doctrines to confuse to confuse with the intent of causing frustration so people just give up on trying to understand. This is what happened to the book of Revelation. This is what happened to uh, people trying to study eschatology or the end times. They, because of so much disinformation and confusion, people just qu quit and don't even worry about it no more. I don't want to think about it because it's so confusing and difficult. That was Satan's goal, to murk the waters and muddy the waters where people would just say, you know what, it is? I ain't even going to worry about it. Not understanding that you, this is stuff you have to understand for survival in the last days. Are y'all there? So look at Psalms chapter 11. Look at verse 3. Are you there? It says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the, say, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Now, you must understand that that is a, that's a message that is saying that although righteous folk, people that live right, that serve the Lord, that seek God, if they lose their foundations, they're in trouble. Amen. Let alone those that don't that play with God. I'm talking about those that really are righteous and trying to follow the Lord. If they lose their foundations, what do they do? That's a question as if they're saying there is nothing left. If you lose your foundations, there's nothing left. See, if you, if you, if you lose the foundations or the cornerstone of Christ being the center, then there's nothing left to build upon. Are you hearing? So there are teachings and there are movements and there are denominations and doctrines and new age stuff that is attacking Christ's divinity, attacking his being born of a virgin, attacking his uh, um, uh, authority, attacking his legitimacy. That's Satan's, that was Satan's goal when Jesus first walked the earth was to attack his legitimacy. You remember when Jesus was casting the devil out of the man at the tomb of Gadarenes and the demon spoke out of the man and said, what are you doing here, Jesus, thou son of God, David? Uh, uh, what do we have to do with thee? He said, it's, the, devil, the demon was saying, it's not time for you to be here. And he said, are you coming here to torment us before the time? He said, it's not time for you to be here. He was questioning his legitimacy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So these erroneous doctrines are being released upon the world and the church. And what it's doing is making people question. That's why you see people who were once solid in the faith. And now they've adopted lascivious behavior because uh, the, 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 their faith has been whittled away at. Are y'all there? In other words, uh, Satan has attacked the foundations of their belief system. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And this is why we always tell you, you better know what you believe because Satan's going to come after what you believe. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, um, so if you look at, uh, I was, I was, me and my wife was watching some stuff today of how 
uh, Judaism is now being mixed with Christianity. You can't even turn on TV without seeing Judaism now. Uh, the very thing that the Apostle Paul was was fighting and, and attacking and was trying to keep the church pure from, from, now the Christian church now, the modern Christian church has adopted Judaism and they, they, they really Israel worshipers. Are y'all there? I mean, me and my wife was watching today. Well, I was like, man, this is just like these, these, this erroneous teaching that they're teaching. And, and, and how is it that Paul said there's neither Greek nor Jew? So why are we singling out a people who they call it? And then if you really study Revelation, the Bible talks about there's a people who call themselves Jews and they ain't. Amen. But we don't even, they don't even, they don't even deal with that. The point I'm trying to make is because of these erroneous doctrines, people's faith, people, people are now, listen, if Satan can't take away your faith, he'll try to make you add something wrong to it. If he can't take it away, if he can't try to destroy it, he'll make you add something to it. You're there. The Bible tells us that we add to our faith. Virtue, patience, look, we add things to our faith. So Satan will try to add to your faith too. So what he's adding to people's faith is works. Now, now I understand that we do righteous works when we are saved, but I'm talking about works of the law, like keeping the feast, Sabbath day. These are things that Christians are being confused about because people are going and getting scriptures. The problem is they're dealing with two dispensations. They're dealing with two different time zones. You got what I'm saying? That means if I go on old, some things in the Old Testament don't apply because Christ is now risen. He's here. It's like the Old Testament was talking about the man to come. Now the man is here and y'all still saying there's something that some need to come. He's here. He's the complete. He's a complete package of the Old Testament. The Bible says everything the prophet was prophesying about is him. So once he's here, we don't need to go back and get revive stuff that's already in him. Come on, talk to me. So, so they're not only so, so now they're not just saying just Jesus and Jesus plus Jesus plus the Messianic Zionism or Jesus plus the Sabbath, Jesus plus the, the cleansings, the feast. Come on, Jesus plus. See, they, they know, now they're saying you got to do some works. And it, why do you think Paul was so thorough? Now do you see why Paul wrote so thoroughly about works, about, you kept trying to talk about uh, we are no longer circumcision in the flesh, but we're circumcision in the heart now. He was, he, he, because these were Judaism principles that they were going behind Paul when he established churches. They were coming into church telling people, you're still not right with God, even though you say you received Jesus Christ, you still need to be circumcised. You still need to keep the Sabbath day. You st come on. You still need to wash your hands like this. You still need to keep the feast. You still need. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so the people were brought. Oh, that's a good word. The people were brought back under condemnation. Go over to Galatians real quick, and I'm going to come back. I just want to jump off real quick. I'm going to show you. What is happening? What happened? What's happening now? Because the work of the, say the work of the cross. Okay, was that a natural work or a spiritual work? It's a spiritual work. This is why when I was preaching about, I was trying to tell people that cross, the cross is not necessarily a, a Christian symbol. It's actually a pagan symbol. Some people got upset over that because they don't understand that, that the cross itself is not, is not the focus. It's the work of. It's what he did on it. Amen. So when he said carry your cross, it's not carry a cross. Amen. It's die yes. to yourself. Die, deny yourself. That's what it's talking about. So you can wear all the crosses, but you ain't doing the work of the cross. The work of the cross is dying. Are y'all there? So people have crosses, but they ain't sacrificing themselves, which is what he was talking about anyway. Y'all there? Let me show you. Look at verse 1. Y'all there? Did I say Galatians 3? Galatians chapter 3. Y'all there? Look at verse 1. Let me, let me show you where we are. You ready? Oh, foolish Galatians. Y'all there? Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Say bewitched. bewitched. And you know that's a trick word. Yeah. Deceptive word. So people are being deceived into being foolish. You got what I'm saying? So there's a deception, there's a bewitching of those, remember I said, if the foundations be destroyed, what were the righteous? So there's a bewitching of the righteous. They're going after those who are solid in the faith. They already got the, the, the fence stragglers and the stragglers. They got them. 
they're already going to fall. As soon as they have to be persecuted, they're going to give up and turn towards the mark of the beast. They're going after the ones that will stand. Now, they can't get you because you're loyal to Christ. They can't get you by your loyalty because you'll die for them if you're really saved. But what they can do is try to bewitch you or deceive you into making you think your stand is not right. Amen. Or what your understanding is and all you can get understanding, but make, make, they want you to think your understanding is wrong. So you ain't got enough. You need to add to. What well, Paul is saying, oh, full of Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? You got that? Before whose eye Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Y'all got that? Now Paul said, y'all saw this thing. Y'all know the who the Christ was. Y'all got that? Look at verse 2. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Y'all got that? He said, did you receive? Now listen, what spirit? The Holy Spirit. He said, did you get filled by the works of the law? Did the Holy Spirit indwell you based on your works? Or did you believe? Well, you know you had to believe to be filled. Come talk to me. So he's saying you didn't receive the Spirit by the works of the law. So if the works of the law was a requirement, you wouldn't have the Spirit. This is why most of these people who are teaching this stuff stay off the Spirit. Because they can't explain how you got the spirit walking in anointing, walking in power, and not on a Sabbath day, and you're not keeping what they're keeping, and you're not walking in all of the stuff they're walking in, yet you're still flowing. And I said, what would happen to ignorant folk who know nothing about the Bible, nothing about the law, but you don't believe me. Let me show you. The Bible talks about there was a man named Cornelius who had a house full of people. All of a sudden, Peter then went over to the house. The Bible says they was already speaking in tongues. He says, Peter, Peter had a dilemma. So what do we do? Do we, what do we do now? Do we, are they saved? Amen. What do you mean you ask them, are they saved? They filled already. Of course they had to believe Amen. salvation to get filled with the spirit. Amen. So the emphasis is not on the works, it's on the spirit. Amen. So in order to deceive you, I must keep you off the spirit and keep you in the flesh. That's why people got robes and prayer shawls and yarmulkes and they're going back to the flesh. Cause, Cause, if you ain't got the spirit, you gotta, you gotta do some stuff in the flesh to look spiritual. That's why you turn on TV; they selling all this stuff and prayer shows and, and 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 crucifixes and all kinds of stuff they doing, trying to be spiritual. Because, see, on the when you just leave it, when you leave it with the spirit, you can't get no money off that. Y'all don't understand. Jesus is bad for business. People don't realize that. Jesus, you can't merchandise the spirit. The Bible says the spirit, blow it where it, it will. It can't be controlled. So when you void of the spirit, you got to look like you got it. So y'all hearing what I'm saying. I told my wife today, I said, baby, why is it that most of these people that to be on TV, when they get ready to speak in tongues, it sounds just like the, they, it's like the same tongue that they got. You don't believe me. Most of these people always have a tongue that sounds something like shanda da. Yeah. <laughs> Am I lying? Am I lying? You, if you just listen to it, you know. Yeah. But why is that? Now, we know the Holy Spirit gives us a heavenly language that's different because the Bible says when they got filled on their Pentecost, it was a language, different languages that were spoken from all over the world. So everybody ain't Shonda dying. So what is that? It's a learned tongue based upon practice or hearing it. Oh, yeah, amen. See, in order to, if I don't have it, I got to fake it. Okay, let's go further. Do you not know? The Bible says that Simon the sorcerer bewitched the people because he was doing spiritual things without the spirit of God. So much to the point that when he saw the genuine power of God, 
He followed it to figure out how to get it. And his motive came forward and Peter had to curse him because he wanted the power only to control people and trick folks to bewitch them still. Y'all got what I'm saying? So, I'm saying that to say, in, back in Galatians chapter 3, are y'all there? That he said this, verse 2, this, this only what I learn of you, receive you the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Verse 3, are you so foolish, listen, having begun in the spirit that you are now perfected by the flesh? He said, how is it that you were perfect enough to be filled with the spirit and now you're trying to add to the work that the spirit's already doing in you? See, the, the Holy Spirit, when he takes up residence in you, that's when the Bible's talking about he that began a good work. It's by the Spirit working in you. He's already working. The flesh profits you nothing. So you're trying to add to what is already being perfected. So if, if I'm trying to add to what's already been perfected, then Jesus' sacrifice was not perfect. So I need Jesus and. Now, you might not understand what I'm trying to teach you. You do understand it. But you got to realize this is the, what is destroying the foundations and shipwrecking people's faith because people are so looking for something that they have not grown in the spirit to be content with Christ. So they feel like it must be... See, when, when, when you live a lascivious or a straddle defense lifestyle... Where you have up some days and down the next, eventually you're gonna think there's something wrong. You must not have something. So when you think you ain't got something, you go looking for it. Well, when you're looking for something, you're gonna find something meant more like fleshly, and you're gonna add that to your faith, just like you uh, add a you know how you cut one plant off leaf and you can put that plant tied to another plant and it'll start growing in? That's what you graft onto yourself something of another species. Eventually, what you graft it on takes over. You got what I'm saying? Did you know it don't matter how much uh, good stuff you have in a drink of milk, no matter how much of that is pure milk. A little bit of poison to kill you. No matter how much poison, no matter how much good milk is in her, a little bit of poison would take over that milk. You got what I'm saying? Well, this is what this is what the bewitching or the error is doing to people. You hear what I'm saying? Come on, y'all hear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it says, how, now listen. He says, how is it that, that that you started out in the spirit? Ask yourself that. Some of y'all ask yourself, how is it that every day I was at the altar, tears flowing down my face, praying anything God told me to give up, I was willing to. I would just see, so I'd get up in the morning and serve him and seek him at night. I walked the floor and praying and seeking the Lord. I would, anything he wanted me, I read the word. when it, I, was, I was living by the unction of the Holy Ghost. When the Spirit told me, when I felt the Spirit nudging me to pray, I prayed. When I, come on, talk to me. When I felt the Spirit tell me to give and sow and help somebody, I did it. I would, just, I would give away my last dime looking for what God wanted me to sow. And now... You've added a lot of stuff to your faith now that you're so sophisticated that you no longer are sensitive to the Spirit of God. So now you're serving Christ in your flesh, and that's why you roller coaster riding. Now you hear what I'm saying? But when you're in the Spirit, the Spirit's a current. Now you didn't hear what I said? It's a current, like a wave. It picks you up and carries you. You ain't struggling, you just riding a wave when you're in the spirit. But when you're in the flesh, you walking and struggling and running and jumping over stuff. But when you're in the spirit, you it's a flow. And because you're in the spirit, the spirit, one of the spirit's job is to energize, to restore, to re you. You hear what I'm saying? Let me get done. Are y'all ready for me tonight? I don't know if y'all are. Look at this. Now. Listen to me. Are you so foolish having begun in the spirit that you are now made perfect by the flesh? This is why when these cats come, because, you know, I, I, you know, these cats throw blows all the time. You know, they come my way throwing these blows, and they be on Facebook trying to throw little blows, little jabs, you know, 
if you ain't if you worship on Sunday, you ain't you going to hell, and, or you ain't obeying the you ain't obeying, obeying God. Convicting Christians because the Bible does talk about the Sabbath day, but the but the, but what they, they talk then they start saying what Sunday is uh, Apollo Sun Sun God Day or it's not the God of the Bible, but it's actually Sunday. The, the, the Catholic Church changed it to that. I said, well, Saturn Day is Saturn's day. It's Sa Saturn is another word for Satan. So if you worship on Saturday, that's Saturn's day. So that's why Paul said, listen, don't get caught up in all this stuff. These days, because every day you better be worshiping him. You got, you got what I'm saying. So they come with this stuff. And the goal is to catch the weak Christians that are not showing their foundation. Remember, what are they attacking? Foundation. Say foundation. foundation. That's why they attack your, your leaders you listen to. Because they know you believe in that leader, so they attack the leader to try to mess with your foundation. See, how many of you all were following somebody or you believed in somebody until somebody attacked their foundation or attacked them and then you... You didn't know if they was right or not no more, so you said, I just better leave it alone. And you didn't receive no more from them. Why? Somebody attacked that foundation and made you stop receiving from that leader. Talk to me. So this is what they are doing. So they come with all these scriptures trying to convict the person that you are somehow off with God because you're not doing a work. They're not tying it to spirit. They're tying it to works. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is why Paul said a man is not saved by works, but by grace. Say amen. amen. Through faith. Not of works, lest any man will start boasting. What you think they're doing? They're wearing these robes down. When Jesus was talking about you first, he's wearing y'all robes down to the floor, and y'all dress right, and y'all tied down to the mint and the cumin and all of that, and y'all got the hats, and y'all got the breastplates, and y'all got all this fancy stuff on when y'all go to the synagogue y'all sit in the chief seats they was working they was an outward appearance of righteousness he said you ain't saved by works but it's by grace you got what I'm saying when you put it on grace it released the control of, of bad leaders over the people y'all y'all hearing what I'm saying and so you need to know this because people would take this book. What did I tell you, teach, teach y'all? The Bible says the letter will kill you. It will kill you. See, this is what was wrong with the Old Testament uh, believers is they couldn't do it. The law was tearing them up. Think about it. Every time they woke up, they was sinning. That's why they had 600, over 600 laws. They couldn't keep them. And, and what happens if you can't do something? You feel condemned. So you know, as, as, a, as a man thinking his heart, so is he. So you start living a condemned life. Because you can't do what your God told you you can. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Can we go here? Amen. Now let me get on. Let me get on. So he says, verse 4, have you suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain. Now listen. So how is it all the things you done been through for Christ? Serving God the way you serving him. That you're going to throw all of that away. Because somebody told you you ain't did this. You're not going to make me throw away my. Come on. Throw away my preparation. Throw away my trials and testings. Throw away my graduation levels and stuff that I graduated on in God. Because you're trying to get me to add something like a Sabbath day to my faith. That when I wake up every day, I'm serving him. The devil attacks on the Sabbath. But he attacks on Sunday. He attacks on Monday. And he attacks on Tuesday. Now I'm trying to, I'm, do y'all do catching what I'm saying? Why would I, all of the, listen to me, he said all of the stuff you've been through with God, all the things he brought you through, brought you out of, and you're going to let somebody tell you, you don't believe him? You're going to let somebody tell you, you ain't got salvation? And you're going, the Bible says, Satan comes immediately for the word's sake. 
So you're going through all this hell. Satan is attacking you because you got the word. Yeah. But you're going to let somebody tell you that the trials you're going through are not because of the word, but they're because you ain't adding something carnal to your life. How is it you have been so easily bewitched that you started off in the spirit and you end up with Jewish stars on? Talk to me. How you start off in the spirit and now you can't pray without a prayer shawl. Look at the stuff that you, you not look, just look at the TV, you'll see what I'm saying. This is the stuff that they're doing. And, and Christians are getting be bewitched because they don't understand that they're supposed to be walking in the spirit. And because they don't walk in the spirit, they live an in and out, up and down life that they think something is missing. So they go looking for it. And here these people are wide open over here telling you, you know why it's just missing? This. Now you back in the flesh, serving God out of your head and your mind. And your spirit stops, ceases to develop, and you become arrested spiritually, and you cease to grow. And then your life becomes what happens to people who grew up in that old holiness apostolic. Your life becomes nitpicking with folks' dresses and nitpicking. Your life becomes attacking folks, uh, uh, attacking folks' outward appearance because you need to exalt your righteousness because you don't have spiritual righteousness no more with God. Do you not, have you ever been to them churches where that's what they mean as a rattlesnake? Because they have ceased to grow. Their whole life becomes judging your dress and your how you, they judging your everything because that's all they can do because they're ceasing to walk by grace. When you cease to grow, you cease to see new things. When you cease to see new things, you cease to have hope. Hope is what you need to release faith. You cease to move. You stagnant and you stuck. And when a person is stuck, they get frustrated. And when you're frustrated, you look around and get mad at who's moving. Are y'all are y'all hearing me? This is what's wrong with some of y'all. You stuck. Then other people come in, they start moving, and you say, well, what's wrong with me? Well, what do I do wrong? Why come I can't? You don't understand. It's not the people that's coming in. It's not Pastor Steve. It's this person that's moving by faith. They, they still liquid. Why you have camp trying to prove your righteousness. That's why I tell y'all, stop going on Facebook, arguing with folk, trying to prove your right. Stop it. This makes you stuck. Now, when people attack my ministry, I have to tell them, I say stuff to them, but I ain't on that trying to... That's me trying to prove my righteousness. I just make a video about it. I don't even... I'm just making me a video. Because I understand warfare of the enemy. Warfare of the enemy is to say... The enemy always tells his side without another side. See, when you have a platform, you have to use your platform to tell the other side so people say, oh, okay, I understand that. So the Bible says the man seems right until he's cross-examined. See, when people attack you and slander, they're going to seem right if you don't say nothing. If you don't have another side, they're going to say, people run with what they heard first, especially when it comes to preaching. So I've got to make sure you have a rebuttal on the other side. Amen. Now, are y'all there? Can we get on? He says, verse 5, He therefore that ministered to you the Spirit... And work at miracles, miracles among you, doeth he do it by works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Say, so does somebody come in and tell you that you have to go through the ceremonial cleansings in order to receive a blessing or a miracle from the Lord? Or do you have to um, wear this garment? That I have on in order to, or you have to, um, you have to um, circumcise your child the way the eighth day. See, these are law things. Now, if you didn't circumcise your child, does that cut them off from the blessing? No. No, why? Because the blessing is not by work of the flesh, it's by belief. Do you listen? Do y'all not understand? What y'all you understand how important what I'm telling you is? Because this thing is going to come down to what well, I'm telling you. You got to hear what I'm saying. Remember when Jesus was eating with his disciples and the first he came up and said, they ain't washing their hands when they eat. And they was trying to condemn Jesus and his disciples because they wasn't washing their hands. And Jesus said, man, listen. 
Come on, man. He basically like, look, man, you this has nothing to do with what y'all think it has to do with. Y'all done made a y'all done made a so y'all make y'all making reasons to stone folk. Y'all coming up with y'all using the law to kill people so you don't really have the spirit of the word. The spirit is not to kill. The Bible says the spirit giveth life. Can we keep going? So look at this. He that worked in miracles. Okay, verse 6. Even Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. So he said Abraham wasn't blessed because he was Abraham. He wasn't blessed because he was considered a Hebrew. That ain't why he was blessed. His bloodline ain't what made him blessed. He was blessed because he believed God. So faith was the prerequisite. For the blessing. Grace is him coming to you, giving you a faith opportunity. Oh, yeah, you can't. No, you didn't hear what I said. You didn't listen to me. You didn't got to come on. Come on, come on, stand up. Come on, come on, come on. Three, come on. Go stand over, son. I just need two of y'all. You stand right here. You stand right here. This, this, he is over here. He is a heathen like we were before we were saved. Heathen is unbeliever. He has no right covenant. Ain't no need him asking God for nothing. Because he doesn't qualify. His birthright, his sin, his unrighteousness, his dirty bloodline would never qualify him to be in God's family. Nothing he can do about it. Nothing he can say about it. No matter how much he, he can cry all he want to. But this is grace. Come on, you can see her. This is God. This is grace. This is God. This is grace. Come here. Now, God, God looks, look around, and see him over. He don't, look at Wade. Look at Wade. Look at Wade. He don't see God. He don't know God. He, not, he don't even know if you to call on God. God's looking at him. God is initiating it. The Bible says it's not that we first loved him. But he loved us first. So while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Before we could even give him worship or anything. So, so God looks over and sees him. Push, push, push him. He pushes grace. Now, that grace is going to him to give him a faith opportunity. Grace is saying, this is God. Recognize. Recognize all this stuff you're going through is because of God. Now... He's got to choose grace. If he receives grace, did, listen then, listen to me. If he receives grace, what saved him? Faith. faith. We're saved by faith. grace through faith. So grace can be here, but he got to receive it by faith. Come on back. Let me show you. Come on back, son. Come on. Stay right there. But this is what they say God is doing now. He's God. God looks over and sees him in his miracle condition. Don't know God. He, this is the law. They send in the law to people. Now come on, push, no, push the law. The law goes over here and says, you know, you ain't dressed right. You ain't born of the right bloodline. Y'all want you don't worship on the right day. This is the law. Now, what happens to him? There's nothing to believe in. He can't release his faith because law has condemned him. He can't believe in condemnation. There's nothing to believe in when you're using the law. It don't mean that the law is bad. No, the law is just fulfilled. Amen. Amen. The law means, when I say the law is fulfilled, it means it's total, it's summed up already. Yeah. It's like two plus two is four. We already know the answer, so right. we don't need to go back to two plus two because we know it's four. Yeah. We can go straight to four. Yeah. Instead of sending people equations to confuse them, <laughs> give them the answer, which is yeah. grace. Come on, y'all can sit down. Thank y'all. 
Do y'all see what I'm saying? This is the Judaism, Judaizers coming into the body of Christ. Not just Judaizers, but also the uh, Romans. You know, there was three attacks on the church. Y'all ready? It was three attacks on the church during Paul's day. Man, this wasn't even a message, y'all. It was part of it, but it wasn't the whole mess. I'm going to finish it out, though. There was three attacks on the church. You remember, Paul kept on dealing with the, Judea the Judaizers. Those were the first Sikh Jews that kept coming behind every time they were playing a church. Remember, Timothy had to deal with them. They kept, they were trying to despise Timothy because he was young. Paul said, no, 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 stand up, stand up. Don't let them despise you because of your youth. Then there were the Romans. The Romans was coming in with Catholicism or this, this pagan, paganism, paganism. And the Greeks were coming in with Gnosis, knowledge. The Bible says the Jews, the Greeks seek knowledge and the Jews look for a sign. Say sign. Did y'all hear what I just said? The Jews need something outwardly to say you with God. You got to have an outward righteousness to say you with God. The Greeks say, don't worry about how you look. What do you know? Gnosis. The Romans say, we don't believe none of that anyway. See, the Romans is the one that crucified Christians. They don't even they ain't believe none of that anyway. You, are you hearing what I'm saying? These are the three attacks on the modern church now. While we got a, the Romans, the Pope over now, attacking the church, saying Jesus ain't no longer the way. Go and study. He just said it. Amen. Are y'all there? We got, the, we, got the, we got the false Jews, the Khazar Jews, that attacking the church, saying that uh, they're still waiting on the Messiah to come telling us that the Messiah that came ain't the Messiah. They're still waiting on the Messiah. How in the world I'm going to be with you and you don't even believe in my God? I ain't giving you a dime. The Bible says have favor to the household of faith. I ain't sending a dime over. Have favor to the household of faith. Y'all got to hear me. This stuff is crazy. People, this man, this Judaism has done, took over the church. Sending these hex hexagon flags to people's hexes. Hanging up in churches, hexes. No, sir. They don't study enough. And then the Greeks are these Gnostics. It's coming with this flip around God. Lucifer's God. Uh, Yahweh's uh, uh, really evil. They come knowledge. They're getting as much trying to get this knowledge. These are the three things attacking the church. These are the three things attacking your faith. You better know it because sometimes you can't really discern it. It's almost like you got to be watching when these cats say things. Be careful when they say things because it's just like how they're saying uh, there's a Jesus that the Muslims believe in. Me and my wife was watching something today and there was a man that went, he was over in the Muslim world and the people, the Muslims were getting healed. But he told them, you can receive, you can get healed, but you ain't got to change your God. So Jesus heals you, but believe, but to go ahead and believe in Allah. See, this is the stuff that's happening. And because, because of the lack of um, a true biblical uh, understanding, and most Christians don't have a foundation, they believe whatever wind of doctrine <sighs> blows in the church. Can we keep going? Let me get done. Now, verse 7, now you know. Let me see if I'm going to finish this now. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Now ye know, I mean, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. What was the Jews' issue? They kept saying, we are the seed of Abraham. They said, hey, remember they were talking to Jesus and they said, and they said, uh, Abraham is our father. Amen. You remember Jesus saying that? And, and Jesus kept rebuking them about that. saying, God can raise up these rocks. Raise up anything to be you in Abraham. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so what they kept doing, they kept tying themselves to a flesh covenant, something fleshly, to prove righteousness by the flesh versus righteousness by grace through faith in the spirit. You got what I'm saying? Now, look at this. He says, he says, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So we have taken the place of any original Jew. I'm on, I don't like using Jew no more. I don't, that word ain't even really in the Bible. Hebrew. 
we've taken the place of those original Hebrews. Those that are in faith. Those that are in faith. Amen. Because those original Hebrews, whether you call them Hebrew Israelites, whether you call them black or white, or the ones over in, in Palestine, they don't believe in Christ as being the way anyway. So therefore, they cut themselves out of being translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Y'all have what I'm saying? Now, now you got to know, remember we was talking, Brother Brandon, you told me you saw a guy and he was out there spitting that stuff and he was confusing cats, his Hebrew stuff. They, they didn't know because they, 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 they confused because they don't understand that I ain't got to hear none of what you're saying to understand. All I got to know is what you're saved by. But because we're so unsure of our own foundation, we won't even stand on the truth. We won't even stand on the word and say, no, nah, dude, that ain't, well, whatever you say is fine, but this ain't what I'm believing. But they'll take you to that word, and they mainly stay in the Old Testament, and they really don't talk a lot about Paul. And most people now in the Bible, now everybody that's using, everybody that's really working in false doctrine now, stay away from Paul. That's why I love Paul's ministry. I said, God, if you didn't put Paul in, the, we would be deceived. Because Paul stops a lot of stuff. Because he comes straight. This is why this big feminist movement in the church don't like Paul. They actually say Paul's a chauvinist. That's how they justify being out from up under male headship. Paul, it was just of that day, and Paul, it was the culture. When Paul went all the way back as he was talking about the beginning, to, uh, 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 Adam was formed first. So, so how, is he, how is it of that day when he going back to Genesis? Talking about the order God set in the beginning. And because of, the, of, the, of Paul calling the weaker vessel of a woman, the weaker vessel of a woman, the man was supposed to be the head. Then he goes on to where there's no doubt the head of the man is Christ. The head of the woman is the kills it so we gotta leave let's leave Paul alone that's why they don't want to talk about Paul you, you see they, they, I'm t there are people who think Paul should not have wrote what he wrote in the Bible he shouldn't be in the Bible because whenever you want to get it straight about the church you go to see what he was saying because he was dealing with what we're dealing with today he was speaking to exact issues that are today that's why we got three attacks and he was dealing with three attacks you got Greeks, Jews, and Romans. You got the lasciviousness, which was the Roman culture. You got the Greeks, which was the knowledge, which is where all the Western thought and philosophy is founded on the Greek culture. And then you got the, the Jews, which is looking for a sign, condemning folks because they ain't of the seed of Abraham. That's, that's in the church today. So it ain't like Paul wasn't talking to what we're dealing with. He's talking to the same spirits of religion. Are y'all there? Come on, it's a rich word. Come on. Look at this. He says, now he says, verse 8, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. Oh, that's a good word. Man, y'all got to catch what Paul's writing. This is awesome stuff. See, this, this kills arguments. This, this kills, this, this break your condemnation. When they tell you, because they're going to start telling you, you ain't saved unless you Unless you, unless you worship the Jews or why do you think the Bible says listen I'm going to show y'all how, 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 how righteous Jesus was, is he says you know those are people that say they are Jews they are not they really love the synagogue Satan now listen I'm going I'm to make them come and bow to you to prove to you I love you he said I'm going to come I'm going to show the people who calling themselves Jews but I'm not I'm going to make them come and bow to you the ones I've chosen are you hearing what I'm saying? Can we go? Look at what he's saying. And the scripture foreseeing that God will justify the heathen through faith. That's why we can no longer get with who's a Jew and who ain't. And who's a Hebrew and who ain't. Because the Bible says foreseeing means God was standing way back, looking through time, saying, yeah, I'm going to make them righteous. Now, let me show you how messed up this is. What happened when Jesus, when the Syrophoenician woman came to Jesus begging about her daughter being healed? And Jesus said, man, look, you know we I can't give this children's bread. We don't deal with y'all. This is only for the Jews. No, this is for the Jews. The healing is for the Jews. The children's bread is for the Jews. Then he called her what they really looked at them as, as a dog. All of a sudden, the principle of you not justified by your bloodline 
she released the qualification. I'm so glad faith is it. So nobody can exclude me. Why do you think God put it on faith? Because people will try to make God exclusive. Like the Pharisees made God exclusive. She released a qualifier. And even Jesus said, whoa, wait a minute, wait, wait. Father, you said, y'all don't want to hear this. Jesus, Jesus said, I only, I'm only doing what I see my father doing. He had to say, Father, wait a minute, you said that I am only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What is this new thing? Then, then God had to tell Jesus, look, man, I, forced, I was looking down through time. This was my plan in the whole time. And Jesus is saying, wait a minute, just attack her. Y'all don't know how profound this is. You don't know how profound this scripture really is. This is a tech. I was sure who's supposed to be saved. And I know it wasn't them. All of a sudden, now I'm going to tell you, Jesus was God, but he was man. He was God, he was man. So he had to be, there were some things that he had to be taught of the Father. Well, you don't believe it. What was he going to pray for? What was he doing praying? He was downloading. He doing what you doing. He getting a download from God to see what's going on. I'm only doing what I'm saying. He would go pray and come out and do what he was in the prayer about. He would come go pray and do what he's in prayer about. Now, God had to teach that to his own son. Okay, let's go further. You remember the, you remember the centurion soldier? Centurion, what of the house? Roman. What of the household of Israel? Yet, he said, listen here. Listen, man, I need my daughter. I mean, my servant. You ain't got to come to my house. Just speak the word because I understand authority, Jesus. And if you are who you say you are, then what, what you say is done wherever you are, wherever you say it. Jesus said, what did Jesus say? He said, whoa. He's astonished as if he didn't see that coming. Now, he might have not seen it, but God said, I foresaw the day that, that kept, I foresaw the day that people would be disqualified, would end up being qualified by their belief. So I can't put it on works, and I can't put it on strength, and I can't put it on your bloodline, and I can't put it on woman, and I can't put it on man. It has to be by faith. I'm preaching y'all better tonight than I should be. So he says, so Jesus, now what did Jesus say? I have not seen such great faith in all of Israel. He's astonished that God done called a play that wasn't in the playbook. He said, wait a minute. So all of a sudden, okay, so let's, let's go back and realize, for God so loved the world. Before the foundation of the world, Christ was slain before. So God already knew what was going to happen, so he must have knew. So, what's that? What? Oh, 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 oh. oh stick your finger right there. Don't forget Galatians 3. We're going to come back. This is one of my favorite. Uh, uh. Y'all need to hear this. Y'all need to go back. Romans 8. Hurry up. Quick, 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 quick. So I can go back to Galatians. Romans 8. Quickly, quickly. Romans 8. Romans 8. Are y'all there? Come on, get there, get there, get there, get there. I want you to see this. These are scriptures you need, to, you need to have ready when the Bible says when it's time for you to defend the faith. You're going to have to defend what you believe. It ain't enough to say what you believe now. You better be ready to defend it. Are y'all there? Verse 29. You had 29? For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed. So, 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 before the Old Testament, 
he knew Steve that wouldn't be born of pure blood like nobody else is, even those who call themselves Hebrews. Because he foreknew me, he predestined me to be conformed to the image of the only thing I should ever try to be like. To the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn of many, many brothers. Did y'all hear that? Ain't that a good word? I'm so, I'm, listen, oh no, y'all didn't, y'all didn't get it. Y'all didn't catch the word. There's a word there you got to catch. Predestined. Do you know what, no, do you really understand what pre, you know what destined, you better know what destined means. You know what destined means. You know what destined means? That means I'm going to make it. I'm destined to get there. I'm going to make, say make it. Now, to predestine me, to, pre, to be predestined means I was going to make it no matter what. I was, listen, no, let me go back. I already made it. We're not dealing with a God that walks in days and time. I already, because, listen, this is a blessing. Listen to what I'm saying. Because he, now if he didn't know me before, I was in trouble. The Bible says that people won't walk and say, Lord, Lord, he's going to say, depart from me, you seek of iniquity. I don't know you, seek of iniquity. <laughs> I don't know you. I don't know you, right? But if he, if he foreknew me, then I'm predestined to go. No matter what. That means no matter what happened in my life, I'm going to make the choices. So how did he, how did, how do I know that he foreknew me? Because I received him when I heard him. Listen, I received him when I heard him. Why do you think the Bible says don't miss your day of visitation? It's a day he visits those. You don't visit those you don't know. You visit those you know. The problem is we didn't know him. We had to get reacquainted. He foreknew me. Before I formed in your mother's belly, I knew you were predestined. So therefore, I knew you. I knew you were with me. You were somewhere with me because I had to know you. So when I saw Steve, Steve had to be born just like Jesus was born, with no memory of, the, of that world. He had to be taught he was Christ. Y'all don't want to get... He had to be taught he was Christ. He, he needed faith like you need faith. Are y'all there? The Bible said Jesus went through every temptation known to man. He had to go through unbelief, battling with unbelief, battling with fear. He had to. If, how would he know how to be your perfect savior had he not been through what you've been through? Are y'all there? Let me get back. Go back to Galatians and I'm closing. Go back to Galatians and I'm closing. You have to know these things. The very thing, the very reason that I am in this church today is because he foreknew me. He predestined me to be saved. This thing is a setup for me. I'm only walking out the predestination. Now y'all hearing what I'm saying? Are you there? Look at this here. Now, now, now I was in Galatians. Where I stop at? Did y'all, did y'all, were y'all following along? Round eight. Verse eight. And the scripture foreseen that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In these shall all be blessed. So then, they which are of faith are blessed with, now I'm telling y'all this because the, the, it's coming down to who's, who's Abraham's seed. You know that's what they're fighting for over in Israel. Who's Abraham's seed? They keep going back to Abraham. For as many as are the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curses everyone that, count, that continue it not in the things that are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. He says, so even if you keep the law, God's not justifying you because you're doing it. Amen. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Because the law couldn't do what Christ did. The law can't do it. Are you there? He says, but the man and the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Do you hear what he's saying? If you follow, if you do the law, if you seek to live by the law, then that's what's going to always be your judge. Amen. You're not going to be able to escape the law. So then guess what? You will always be under condemnation because you will never measure up. You will never measure up. Are you there? Verse 13, but Christ had redeemed us. Listen, not from the law, but from the curse. What is curse? Penalty. The law still good. He just took away the penalty. That when I sin, I'm no longer condemned. I'm teaching y'all better than y'all understand. Do you hear what I'm trying to tell you? That that's how to be a good word for y'all. That that, that 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 he didn't take away the law. The law is still good. But he took away the curse. So that when I wake up and I don't love my wife today, or I say something I shouldn't say, or I lie, cheat, or steal, I'm not condemned. I have a way out through Christ to come to him and say, Lord, forgive me. And he'll say, I forgive you. And go make restitution. Amen. See, y'all ain't, ain't doing that part. Right. You can't just say, forgive me. Now go get that right. right. Amen. When I do that, then no law can stick to me. Amen. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Why you think the devil is so upset? Because it's so simple. It's so simple. He's mad that it's, you mean it's that simple? God, why did you do that for me? Because you weren't created like man. You were created to you were created to help man, to be over man, not to not to act like man. Man was created a little lower. A little lower. We wasn't we don't have the power, the, the, the abilities as angels. These angels are beholding the glory of God in sin. Greater judgment. To whom much is given. Let me get done. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. So, see, when you go do the law, when, when, when you try to be justified, not do the law, when you try to be justified by the works of the law, like keeping these feasts and stuff like that, what you're saying is Christ, he, wasn't, he was cursed for nothing. Because I'm saying that the, that the feast, the weeks are saving me, and the Passover is saving me. And I'm saying that the Sabbath is what's saving me. Are you, come on, y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm saying that, 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 that dressing a certain way is saving me or, 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 or washing this way is saving me. I'm saying the fact that I'm not, I'm not stealing my neighbor's wife, that's saving me. Or that I'm not killing is saving me or I'm not stealing is saving me. Well, none of the, you shouldn't do none of them things, but that's not saving you. You're not killing and stealing and sleeping with your neighbor's wife because you are redeemed. Once I redeem, I'm free from the, from the curse of the law. I don't have to sin. It's too much. Let me get done. Listen, now you're ready. She says, for curses everyone that hang on, on the tree. That Let me read it again. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curses everyone that hang on the tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Christ. So I don't have to be of the bloodline. I don't have to be Hebrew or Jew. Because nothing is going to get me into, in, into the kingdom but my belief in him. And it has to be by belief because everybody can do that. Even a retarded person can believe. See, if it was on something else, people would be excluded. If it was on weight, height, size, intellect, knowledge, wisdom, ability, a lot of us wouldn't be going. But even children, little bitty kids, you can tell them about Jesus and they're, in their heart they believe. A person on dope out of their mind barely can think straight, but they, are, they, they can believe. It don't require you to be cleaned up. It don't require you to do on it. But y'all heard what I'm saying. Thank God for that. I'm glad he didn't have, I didn't have to be something for him to save me. Look at this. He says, he says and this is so the blessing of Abraham, Mike, now this is what I'm trying to show you. So the blessing of Abraham might come. Um, the best of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, just Gentiles. These was people that wasn't even of the household of Israel. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. What what is the whole deal here? Is it prosperity? Is it money? Is it riches? What is it? Is it? It's the promise of being. It's the promise of the Spirit. What do you mean? The, the, the Spirit is the whole point. 
the spirit is what connects me to God. Now I can approach the throne of grace boldly. Because I got his spirit. See, without the spirit, I don't know him. I'm not connected to him. But I can have received the spirit, not by my bloodline, not by any work that I'm doing, but I can receive the spirit by faith alone. So my goal in life is not to get more things. It's to get more spirit. That's the goal in life. Lord, I need more of your spirit. More of your spirit makes me like you. More of your spirit causes me to rise above. I don't have to worry about trials and warfare. I only worry about that stuff because I ain't got more. The whole goal, it was, listen, y'all, it was always the goal. God told Abraham, I want to be your habitation. I am your reward. It ain't what I got. It's me. I want to be your reward. So I reward you for living righteous with my spirit. I reward your faith by giving you more of me. Don't you want the real reward? Amen. Or do you want my stuff? You can have my stuff and not have me. That's why I heal Muslims. That's just my stuff. I'll give anybody my stuff because I so love the world and I'm good to everybody. I rain on the just and the unjust, but there's only certain of those that got me. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is a down payment, a guarantee on your salvation. The very fact that I'm filled with his spirit guarantees I'm saved. That's why I could never put my relationship or my salvation on something carnal. It has to be on the spirit. Because that's the only thing that is eternal. So we're basing it. That's why Paul said it's not about excellency of speech. It's about demonstration of the power of God. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. How is it that those of us who are filled could get more of it and we neglect it? We can get more of his spirit and we don't even take advantage of it. Building up your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. We could have more of his spirit. But we have to avail ourselves. You, are you there? I'm closing right here. Look at this. Look at this. He says. He says. I stopped at 14. He says, listen. He said, brother, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet it be confirmed, no man disannul it or add it thereto. Here we go, there's the problem. Add to what's already there. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not and to seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Christ. What did, what, what, what did God use Abraham to do? He just wanted a righteous bloodline. That's all he was trying to get Abraham to do. What did they do? They kept messing up. That's why God said, I, have to, I, I foresee what they're going to do. So I'm going to have to make, I'm going to have to set it up. What they can't mess it up. That's what predestination is. I got to set it up so they can't mess it up. Because if they even know what I'm going to do, they would mess it up. That's why you where you are. Because all of the little stuff that you think is problems are keeping you predestined. Because if I was to do what you want, you'd mess it up. So I had to say, I got to take you out of the equation in order to get my a desired effect. So this thing really ain't so much about me as it is about God showing the devil I, what I said is going to be. So, cause, so that's why you say he that began a good work. See, it's, it's inside of my hands. He will finish it. He started it. I didn't start this. He started this. He initiated. And because he started it, he must have foreknew it. So if he foreknew, he predestined it. 
So the very fact that he started it means that he knows, he knows I'm going to have to go here. I'm going to bump my head over here. I'm going to bump my head here. I'm going to do something silly right here. I'm gonna do some, none of this is going mess, gonna to mess up the predestination because it was written into the, into the plan in the first place. Listen, this is a good word. He made allowances for my foolishness. You hear me, Sister Janice? That's a good word. He made allowances for my foolishness. He took into account my instability, my flightiness, my, with the, stuff, the silly stuff, the attitude, stuff I wouldn't get over. He knew it. Predestination means you're still going to be where I told you to be when it's all over. Listen. Listen, because the goal is not a place. It's a state. Uh, y'all. It's not where you are. It's not where you are. It's like a destination place. Like, like, like you got to get to a certain uh, city. No, that's not. That's, the goal is not a destination. The goal is a being. It's a state of being. When he come, I'm going to be. Whether I'm in, over there or I'm over here. Whether I think I'm done or not done. Whether I've achieved what I wanted or not. It don't matter. The state that I'm going to be in is what he predestined. You got to, oh man, y'all ain't, ain't even saying that. Y'all, y'all, stand on your feet. I'm done. I, I. Now you say, so if that's the case, then why live for him? Because it's not automatic for everybody. Everybody ain't predestined. And you do know that. Everybody's not predestined. Some people are going to hell. As the Bible says it. But the very fact he initiated this thing with me, that means he foreknew Steve. That's the most, that's the greatest blessing I've ever heard. That because he, was talking, he messed with me, he came messing with me, that he foreknew me. Just the fact that he foreknew me predestined me. He wouldn't mess with me if he didn't foreknow me. He had to know me to become messing with me. And if he, if he know me, that means he knew my destiny would be. That's why the Bible says that um, I know the thoughts I have towards you. These are thoughts of good, not evil, that I may bring you to an expected, expected end, expected. So that's a place, that's an expected place for you to be. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing.